Can, okay. do we turn on? Yeah, turn on all of them. Turn them all on. You want me to see if it's on? Yes. It's not. Hello. Awesome. That one's on too. Okay. Cool. Good. Hi, everybody. Um, I am so excited to be up here um, and talking to you all today about one of my favorite things in the world, which is called Map Time. Um, and I am here, my name is Beth Schechter, and I do uh, education and outreach at Stamen Design. Um, my name is Lizzie Diamond. I do education at Mapbox. And together we are two of uh, four co-founders of Map Time. Um, so the other two co-founders are Camille and Alan, um, and they have really like helped us get this thing off the ground, along with people like uh, Rafa Gutierrez, who I don't think is here today, um, and Eric Rodenbeck, and really everybody else at Stamen Design, who's been so supportive of MapTime. Um, and then there's like hundreds of other people who are also contributing to MapTime all of the time. So raise your hand if you've actually heard of MapTime. Okay, cool, awesome. So a lot of you know what it is, um, which is really exciting for me because not long ago, uh, it wasn't even a thing. Um, so we got started in San Francisco, um, and what we do is we uh, have like these small educational knitting circle type meetups where, oh, hi, Ted, um, where like everybody gets together and we all learn about um, open source web mapping, and it's super duper duper fun. Um, and now it's kind of spread all over the world. We have map time in places like Milan and Johannesburg um, and Berlin and the Alps and all over the place. It's crazy. Um, and what's great is that like all of these different map times are you know creating their own different things. Map time DC is huge, um, and they uh, they have a ton of people who come like every single time that they do a map time. Um, and from from all this energy has been spawned things like uh, one of our favorite exercises, which we did last night, um, called hand drawn maps, um, where rather than like looking at code or doing tutorials, people get together and actually just draw maps. You have pens, you have paper, sometimes beer, sometimes wine, and snacks and drawing, and it's the best. Um, people also, like, really, this is also really a place for people to feel safe and get together and, um, and learn how to use some basic tools. So this is actually um, Danielle Dye, who's now a, an organizer at MapTime Oakland. This is her very first map that she made in Tile Mill. Um, it is, is it the world's most beautiful map? Probably not. Um, however, yes. Yes, it is the world's most beautiful map. Um, well, because it's somebody's first. Like somebody was a beginner, and before they came to Map Time, she hadn't done this, and then after it, she had. Um, and so now, yeah, we have all of these meetups that are all over the world. Something like forty-six to fifty chapters in about thirteen time zones. And we get an email almost every single day. We got an email today from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and one two days ago from Kansas City, Missouri. Yep. So. And there's one, I think, uh, from London in my inbox also. Oh, um, good to know. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. So, so how did all of this happen? Um, and what has made this community a success? And what have we learned along the way? Um, and our, our story really starts at State of the Map 2013 um, with a talk by somebody that some of you probably know, uh, the amazing Alyssa Wright. And Alyssa Wright gave a talk that was all about uh, diversity or the lack of diversity in OpenStreetMap, um, particularly for women. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, like implications of that. For example, she cited something where there were like 14 different, you know, categories for childcare, and then only one category, or I'm sorry, there are 14 different categories of bars, and then only like one category for childcare. Um, and so and that's kind of like an implication for who's making the maps. So I decided, okay, I totally want to be a lady who's participating in OpenStreetMap and in open source web mapping. So I'm going to do like this very Buddhist thing, and this like very intentional thing of taking time once a week with some girlfriends, and we're just going to like hack through some leaflet tutorials and actually uh, like one of like the very original leaflet tutorials was, like the very first thing that we did um, so I sent an email to some friends and was like hey you guys want to come over and make some maps and they were like sure that sounds cool and so we started like once a week just getting together and um, doing kind of whatever with regards to web mapping in fact you know it started with just a few friends and then um, you know and we started to do activities like ABCs of cartography um, then we hired this guy Alan McConkey who is in the back over there and Alan uh, he brought 
with him when he started working at Stamen, a love for teaching and also um, a real like desire for like tweeting and social media and that kind of thing, which is something that I'm not very good at at all. So before I knew it, Map Time started getting lots and lots more people, thanks to Alan. And then he also got the attention of this really awesome lady named Lizzie Diamond, who was in Portland at the time. And he was like, oh my, and I'll never forget, he was like, dude, I don't know who Lizzie Diamond is, but we need to be her friend and look at this amazing tutorial that she did, Hell Yes Leaflet, oh my gosh. Um, and like this became like one of the, this became like one of the first like tutorials that we were like, yes, that's exactly the thing. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Um, so yeah, and so over time, Lizzie started to get more involved. She actually moved to uh, San Francisco and you know all this kind of stuff. And I got really excited because more and more women were coming and I was like, yes, this is so super cool. I'm so excited about this thing that's happening. Um, but I was also really kind of a little bit overwhelmed because you know, I had started this thing where I was just gonna you know, get together with my girlfriends once a week and it was like no big thing. And suddenly people from all over the country were asking me questions like, what is map time? Can I join MapTime? What do I have to do? Can I teach any tutorial or just MapTime once? Do these tutorials come in other languages? What if I want to charge people for workshops? Can I use MapTime to test my product? And I really didn't have like a super great answer to any of these questions because I had frankly never thought of them. I was just like, I don't really know. And so I started to do this thing where I was like, well, I don't know what you guys want to do. And then they'd be like, well, I don't know what you guys want to do. And then I don't know what you want to do. And then suddenly it was like, just decide. It's just somebody take direction and decide. Um, and I was really nervous about this because you know it's hard to, for me, I still struggle with like taking direction when you're leading a bunch of volunteers because you know when you're paying someone, it's really easy to say, hey, I need X done. You do this. I will pay you for it. Um, when it's volunteers, it's a lot harder to be like, hey, I need X done. I need you to do this in this specific way in your spare time using your pure joy and love for teaching and talents and stuff. Um, so, uh, I, I, so I started to do some research. And luckily, um, some of the best research actually came from a friend of mine who turns out in 2006 uh, had done an analysis of open source communities, including uh, Wikipedia, the Burning Man, and uh, and uh, what you call it? Uh, I think it's called Think Cycle. So, which is a, a it was a participatory design thing around bike and bike lessons that I don't think is around anymore. Um, and what I learned from this was that there are actually like 10 traits that are really important of su for successful open source communities. And I'm sorry to read a slide, but I'm just going to read it. Um, open and widespread membership based on participation, which cool, we're good there. Uh, geographically distributed asynchronous networked collaboration, awesome, good there. Um, project transparency, particularly open, recorded dialogue and peer review of project materials, discussion and decisions, a compelling foundational artifact to organize participation and build upon, a mechanism for institutional history, a community-wide sense of project ownership, a hybrid political system based on meritocracy, a trusted benevolent dictator, typically the project founder, foundational developers and early adopters who, along with the benevolent dictator, set project ethos, consensus as the decision-making tool, and upholding the right to fork. And I was like, cool, we're doing this pretty well. I'm super thrilled that we're actually doing this. And the things that we really need to work on were we need to work on decisions. And I needed to accept something that I think I was really nervous about accepting was that like, I am the benevolent dictator <laughs> of map time. And people like Lizzie and Alan and all of the people who are really like our, you know, our core early adopters, that they were going to be with me and they were going to be my team to set the project ethos. So I was like, okay, cool. This is great. The only thing I really disagree with is consensus as a decision making tool, just because it's slow, it's inefficient, it doesn't always work. And um, I used to work at Burning Man and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and, but you know, it's not going to say that I don't, I don't want people to tell me what to do. In fact, I really want for the community input from absolutely everybody. And the thing that is a natural counterbalance to any kind of leadership is having the right to fork. So if you have the right to fork, you know that the community, the community knows, and you guys, maybe if, if you didn't know this, I'll tell you now, if you don't like how map time is running, you can leave at any time and start your own thing. But what we all really want is for us to stay together and to really work and support one another. So that's constantly in the back of our minds as we're making decisions. So from this, uh, we went to state of the map last year year and we had our first map time summit and we realized that like there were like 
nine or ten chapters or something that like of, of t nine or ten cities that really wanted to be involved in map time and we we're like okay well we're gonna work with this group and we're gonna start coming up with some ideas about what map time is and then also like what map time is not you know we're not a pyramid scheme we're not jargon mm -hmm. we're not a sales pitch or advertising place um, and having that level of just like, OK, this is our order. We can create some rules. We can create some bylaws really helped us to get to the next step. So um, you know, we recently had Elijah Meeks come and you know, do something at Map Time San Francisco. Um, Vlad has come in and taught about to, uh, Leaflet there too, which was amazing and a totally packed house. And the thing that's like really blowing my mind now is that there are Map Times happening in other languages. Like Map Time Alps just put together this D3 presentation, which is wonderful, and it's in both French and English, and it just kind of blows my mind. So seriously, how do we go from a weekly meetup in San Francisco to a multinational organization of self-organized people all gathering in their spare time for no other reason than to learn how to make web maps together? OMG. So with that, I'm going to let Lizzie talk about it. You get to stand close to me then. OK. Um, so the first thing we realized we had to do was offer guidance and support. Uh, it's really easy to say, like, oh, just go for it. Do your thing, but then people, you know, if you give someone a blank page, it's a lot harder to start drawing than if you give someone something that's partially drawn and have them finish it or critique it or change it or decide that they hate it and do something completely different. Um, and one of the amazing brain children of Beth and Alan was, you know, we should have community come together to help us actually define what map time is. So let's put together some bylaws and put them out to the community and <coughs> see what the community has to say. And it was massively successful. Like there's four or five people who really read through it line by line and left comments and contributed. And then more people than that um, said, we should have a code of conduct. So we should add a code of conduct to our bylaws. And then they put together a code of conduct and added it. all of this happened via Google Docs and GitHub. Anybody had access to it if they wanted it. Um, and it was remarkably successful. We started with a framework and then people added to it. And then you know people were coming on, and they you know the what is map time? How can I get started? And so I put together these onboarding docs. Um, I found myself sending the same email over and over and over again, and decided, well, I'll just make a gist and put it out there for people to take and use. And that has also been iterated on over time um, by from input from the community. Um, and. We also have um, Slack, and Slack is really awesome, both for building community, but also just for being able to be there to answer questions. Um, anybody who is an organizer of map time has the ability to join Slack, um, to start their own channel for their own local meetup, and um, organize and ask questions, and we were there at answering questions all the time. So we have provided a framework for people to work off of and fork and change. Um, but we also are intentionally very hands-off. Um, we have an initial framework that people can take and run with, but we're not going to tell people what they can and can't teach or what they can and can't do. Um, that's totally against the ethos, right? You have to build a map time around your community and what your community wants. I know in Corvallis, there's a lot of people who show up from um, Oregon State University who are Java programmers and who are interested in something completely different than in LA when they're all working together on a group project, um, or in Chicago where they're doing open street map work. So you have to stay pretty hands off. Um, the inimitable, inimitable Mike Magursky, who's been quoted, I think, in almost every presentation that I've seen so far, um, he says, uh, write code, not too much, mostly procedural. And this is a, definitely a driving force for us when we think about how we can provide guidance while still keeping our hands off. Um, the principle is simple, right? If you let communities organize around what they want to learn, then you end up with different communities, different skill levels, using different tools, with different size groups, and meeting at various frequencies until you have a wonderful, beautiful <laughs> rainbow of successful, awesome map times. We also really love rainbows. I think that that's the real secret key to our success is our love of rainbows. Um, and you know, in terms of being hands-off, one of the things that we try to strive for is have people from different map times provide or create educational materials. We've provided some educational materials and people take them and fork them and run with them. Like we, you know, Anatomy of a Web Map was one of the original map time tutorials. It's, you know, how does a web map work? How is it put together? And 
I think almost every single map time has a different version of this, whether it's intro to leaflet or web mapping 101 or something totally different. There's all of these intro to web maps that have the same core elements, but have been changed little by little for each of those communities. And that way each organizer can also put their own spin on the presentation. And that's super duper cool. Um, and, and then, you know, in terms of beyond uh, tutorials, uh, being hands off has made room for so many amazing things. Um, Tom McWright, who is one of uh, my colleagues at Mapbox, he made this amazing GIF of map time. Is it gifting? It's not gifting. Oh, it's not gifting. I think it gift once. Okay, the rainbow colors <laughs> they they go through, and the colors. But not in, not in Keynote. Apparently, that's a shortcoming of Keynote. Yeah, yeah, not really in Keynote. Um, but so he made this GIF of all these rainbow colors cycling through, and then um, Adam Roberts from Map Time Alps made a tool called Map Timeify, where you can actually make map time letters out of any text that you want <laughs> and send the lots online. So, um, and then from there you have uh, map time in the Twin Cities, MSP, um, who they took this idea and then they made a really cool logo for themselves with the rainbow border. Um, Alan McConkey just made an amazing map time t-shirt. Available on Zazzle. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Um, that you can purchase, and um, that was also in the spirit of, of forking. And then um, Omar from LA made this amazing, beautiful map time bear, just, you know, <laughs> California. And then he gave it to the community and said, anybody can take this and use it. And so then people have now used it in <laughs> things <laughs> like, um, you know, the wonderful folks at Cardo DB um, provided. Um, Pizza March, March Madness of Pizza for all the map times. Um, so any map time that was meeting in March has pizza for their meetup. And so we used the map time bear <laughs> to display for everyone how delicious Om Nom Nom's pizza would be <laughs> if they decided to have a meetup in March. Um, so the third thing that we try to do is positive encouragement. Um, this is something that is like an early thing that I really focused on with map time was trying to put as much positive encouragement and sparkles and rainbows and puppies and exclamation points as possible because if you make people excited about learning then they'll be more excited and actually today I made this super cut of all of the slides and all of my talks that have excellent like that are you know these exciting fun slides and um, it's oh uh, it's so exciting I can't watch the gif it makes me a little bit sad but um, it's a little bit long just because it turns out that I put this slide in a lot of my talks um, <laughs> because it's really awesome to feel encouraged and inspired and excited, and uh, especially at the end of a long evening where you've been sitting learning about datums or, <laughs> you know, something else, post-gist. Um, oh god, it's still going, isn't it? <laughs> this only plays once, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Okay, I'm just gonna, yeah. Um, I also like slides like this. Because you need to be reminded sometimes that the tiny potato believes in you, or the tiny cactus. You can do the thing. It's so exciting. You're amazing. And everybody in here who has, you know, finished, had that amazing feeling of like, oh my god, this was so scary. I can't believe it. I can't do it at all. Oh my god, it worked! To know that the tiny cactus believed in you probably is what brought you to that point. Um, and lastly, you know, we're asynchronous, we're divided, we're distributed, but we are all part of the same community. And one thing that we try to do for MapTime HQ is have constant reminders that we are one big community of people. Um, so we had a meeting um, online, an organizer meeting, where we did a Google Hangout on air. It was 7 in the morning in, on the West Coast because we have people in 20 different time zones. We wanted to make sure the most people could um, show up. And this is my stuffed animal, Mr. Broccoli. It's a broccoli. You can't see the top of it, but it's broccoli. So we were having a lovely time with that. And then also, um, if any, any, for all the folks here, if you have a rainbow sticker on your badge, will you raise your hand? Yeah. Those are all people who are involved in map time or who have can answer questions about map time. It's a lot of people. Um, and so at conferences, we try to give out rainbow stickers so that people can feel connected to each other, find other map timers, and answer questions from those who are excited or interested. And that's a great way to keep us glued together and connected. Um, and the last thing that we try to do is constantly learn and grow, just like any open source project is constantly learning and growing. 
based on the people who join, right? And then the different insights that they bring. We didn't start map time with any idea that it would become a big thing. It was in San Francisco, Cleveland, and Portland. And then it was in DC. And then it was in Maine. And then it was in New York. And then it exploded, and now we have 50 chapters. We started it because we love teaching, um, but we also love learning. Um, and that's a really, really good thing because we basically got a crash course in facilitating rapid community growth um, that has been slightly overwhelming, but we play the let's not let each other burn out game quite a bit. It's nice to have partners for that. Um, so our guiding principle to this point, based on these principles that we have already talked about, is to iterate and maintain, keep going, keep trying, keep failing, keep growing, and it's been kind of amazing so far. I'm going to give it back to Beth. Sweet. Thanks, Lizzie. Thank uh, you. Hey, anytime. Um, so uh, in conclusion with Nyancat, um, what makes this community a success? And in here, the two words that really stand out to me are community and success, but really community stands out more than success. And what we found through this experiment, this wonderful, succulent, exploding growth of map time, is that a happy community with the tools to support itself and a lot of love um, creates a happy community, which then equals success. Um, there's an alternative uh, conclusion um, that Lizzie helped me come up with. Um, YOLO, swag, and selfie. <laughs> um, so what's coming next for map time? Uh, there's a lot of things that are coming up. One big thing is that we're doing a, uh, a map time summit at State of the Map this year. So by the way, announcement, if you want to go to State of the Map on the, scholar the, on the scholarship, the deadline to apply is on Sunday. And that also, um, and we encourage everyone to apply to that. And we hope that everybody can come and stay for the map time conference, which will be the Monday just following State of the Map. Um, we're slowly but surely working on our 501c3 status. So wonderful. I love all the legal documents. It's great. Um, and then uh, hopefully uh, facilitating more regional meetups. Uh, there's a really strong collective here in San Francisco and the West Coast and the Bay Area, but there are groups now in Europe that we would love to see get together and hopefully participate in what's the thing in Como? Uh, Phosphor G. Phosphor, oh, the Phosphor G that's in Como coming up this summer. So I really hope that the map times there can all get together and, and do something there. Um, and then there's also a lot of excitement around map time for kids. Our focus is on beginners um, through and through, and kids are beginners too. Um, so we'll see what comes with that. Um, and with all that comes fundraising, which I'm really excited about. Um, because, it, uh, you know, I really, if I had my druthers, I would pay everybody to do the work that they're doing for free from their hearts. Um, but I don't have any money, so I'm going to have to go raise some. Um, so, but really the first thing and the most exciting thing is this Map Time Summit at, at the UN, which is in two months, which is like I'm going to like go to sleep and I'll wake up and then we'll be there. Um, and we need volunteers. We need people who can help us with this conference. So if you're interested, we're looking for people to help with branding and marketing. The Map Time NYC group is really excited about helping with that, and I'm excited to work with them kind of as leaders in that way. Um, documentation is something that I think that we could use a lot of work on in general, but definitely for state of the map. We're looking for people who want to take pictures, who want to maybe take video or blog. Um, also, basic event operations, like I don't know if we'll have a sign-in booth or something like that, but all of that kind of stuff is really helpful, um, as well as volunteer coordination, because if you ever run an event like this, you know that you definitely need um, a volunteer coordinator. Um, and what do you want to do? Like, I think that there are, like, one of my favorite things about map time is that there are so many ways to get involved. And what we hope is that this is a scaffolding and a framework to help people to do what they love in teaching and learning about how to make maps, but then also um, to, you know, to experience your own skills. If you really like graphic design, there's tons of opportunities for that. If you like working on the web, our website needs constant work and you know, Rafa can't do it all by himself and the web team can't do it all by themselves. Um, so yeah, if you have a talent, let us know. Our email is hello at maptime.io, super easy. And that goes to me and to Lizzie and to Alan and to Camille. So someone will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and to quote Miss Penny Beams, who just said this just the other day, you can't do this alone, and that's the point. So, thank you. Cool. So, um, those of you that follow me on Twitter know that I don't love questions at the end of talks, but in this case, we're going to make an exception, um, just For because we adore you, all of you. And actual questions, please. Yeah. Comments. 
to wait till afterwards. Yeah. So this is more of a comment than a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else with questions? Hi. I just wanted to say a little more what you're thinking about uh, Map Time for Kids. Um, so Map Time for Kids is in its very, very early stages, um, and, there, and it's sort of, um, there's a woman in San Francisco who's excited about kind of le leading the charge named Amy Smith, and in Map Time fashion, I'm going to kind of just like be like, cool, take charge, and we'll see what you do. Um, but I think that the idea is to try to, um, at least in San Francisco, there are places, um, or there are workshops like Mission Bit, which are already, uh, which already are set up to... Um, do workshops with kids around technology. Um, I would love, for example, to do like a Mapbox Studio 101 with like some third and fourth graders, for example. I think that that would be super fun. Or to do anatomy of a web map with basically any age group. Um, and the idea would be that we could maybe, we could come in and we could teach it ourselves as a volunteer, or we could work with, you know, if there's another teacher who really wants to, to teach it, maybe they could do it. So, but I'm really, again, leaving this to, to somebody else. So I'm excited to see, excited to see what people do. Yes? No one wants to ask how much money I want? <laughs> That's cool. Yes? How much money do you want? <laughs> One million dollars. No, I actually, I actually don't have a good answer to that question. <laughs> but I will, take, I, I will totally take your money. So. And I will put it towards good causes. So you're going to ask too. Ding. What's the smallest map time like, um, in terms of people involved or in terms of the city? I live in a small city, and so getting this started with a very few amount of people might be really difficult. Um, Ames, Iowa, Muncie, Indiana. Um, there's a very small chapter in Quezon City in the Philippines. Um, Johannesburg, South Africa is a very small chapter. And there was a map time in Maine that actually bounced between cities. So um, it, they would do one in Portland and one in Bangor back and forth. Um, but the organizer there actually moved to Washington. So that chapter is floundering, for lack of a better word. Um, so uh, He also moved to San Francisco. Oh, I thought he moved to Seattle. Oh, he moved to Seattle. Yeah, so yeah, the, the organizer's not in Maine anymore. So. Um, that's what I said. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was like, the flound crazy? No, the flounder. Oh, you said floundering. I was like, oh, it's not anymore. It, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, so, um, but then, you know, so it's, you know, from, from Muncie, Indiana, and Ames, Iowa, all the way to New York City and London. And then sometimes there are small chapters that are actually in bigger cities. So we have a West London chapter, and then someone else is starting a Central London chapter because it's such a large place. Um, similarly, in Colorado, there is Map Time Mile High in Denver, and also Map Time in Boulder, even though those cities are relatively close. And then, of course, my favorite, ex relatively, and my favorite example is Map Time San Francisco and the far superior Map Time Oakland. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, cool. you, can, you can slice it anyway and, and it works out. Um, actually, someone emailed us about State College, so I can put you yeah, in touch with that. Yeah, I, I know who it is. Oh, okay, cool. We're trying to figure out in terms of student population that kind of is in flux constantly. It's, it's kind of a weird place to start a thing that kind of needs somebody who. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Madison, Wisconsin might be good people to talk to, too, because they're in a college town, as well as Nick from uh, Map Time in Corvallis, um, college-focused one. So you covered a wide variety of topics, obviously all open source you know, um, software, data, OpenStreetMap, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, not everyone's a map geek like mm -hmm. we are in there. Not everyone's going to be interested in all of that. Do people tend to, you know, just kind of come to some of the meetups, or, or is it kind of a core group that shows up all the time? Uh, yeah, no, people show up um, to a variety of meetups. Like I said, I, I did a, a meetup on Geodesy on datums. And people who show up to a meetup on datums are not the same people who are going to show up to a meetup on OpenStreetMap. Um, and actually, with San Francisco and Oakland right now, we're working through a, an experiment of doing kind of a curriculum. So um, we have we meet like three times um, a month between both Oakland and San Francisco. And from time to time, 
you have a, is that what you have up there right now? I'm trying to I'm trying to pull up the thing, but my um okay. my display um, is wonk. The uh, so some of the sometimes we'll actually do repeats. So we'll we've done um, anatomy of a web map. We'll do anatomy of a web map again. Sometimes we'll do curriculum focus. Sometimes we'll be project focus. Sometimes we'll be show and tell. Um, and it really depends. Um, it depends on what people want to learn. And you know, there's different. We mentioned different meeting frequencies. So sometimes people some meetups meet once a week. Some meet once a month. Um, and it it totally varies. There's no need for everyone to show up every time. But there are. Um so we did, uh, and I was just trying to pull it up on our on our website. So there's um, a lessons and resources page, which I think you mentioned about, um, which has a bunch of different tutorials with different subjects in it. And then there's also a blog post that we put out at the beginning of the year um, with like a six month schedule. And there's a few things that people can do in order that we recommend doing in order, like starting with anatomy of a web map. Like if you like come to it and you're like, I just want web map, don't know anything. Um, then we start with anatomy of a web map, and then we have an OSM 101 that we do, and then we do like. Like Car and then we do like Carter DB, and then we do Mapbox Studio, and then it, it kind of, there's a few that actually like go in order like that, and then the rest of them are kind of random. Um, and I found that like yeah, and like Lizzie said, it's just different people for different things. Some people just want to drop in and see what it's like. Some people are like really into it and want to just come to every single one. And other people pick and choose just depending on what they want to learn. Um, at Lizzie's. Um, I, I hope that a lot of people in here, and I, I imagine a lot of people in here did see Lizzie's talk the other day about on-ramps to open source, and I think that that's like actually a great example of all the different types of people who come to map time. Um, there's cartographers, there's data people, there's designers, um, and we really try to sort of like start at the beginning so that anybody can participate. Do you find that in many of these uh, geographies where these groups are, there's a parallel open street map community, if you will, and they kind of come in, you know, into your meetups and go with Sometimes. Or kind of, they tend to merge together? Or? There are a lot of chapters that have been born out of Code for America brigades, mm -hmm. like in Hampton Roads, Virginia, they actually are the same group, uh, the same in Puerto Rico. Um, and the, Atlanta. And Atlanta. Oh yeah, and Atlanta. Um, so uh, that's a, a typical one. Um, map time, Salt Lake City is actually Martine Van Axel uh, from OpenStreetMap fame. He turned his OpenStreetMap group into a map time. So it just depends. It depends, although the one thing that I think that distinguishes us from OpenStreetMap is that we really, our primary focus is learning, and which is not, and it's not to say that you can't learn at like, a mapathon or like you know like an OSM mapathon but I've also attended and been part of mapathons where it's like actually people are just like sitting around and like drinking beer and there's two women me being one of them serving them cake and I'm like this is actually not what map time is about for me it's about teaching and learning and uh, making everyone feel welcome and you know also trying to sort of like you know part of the reason I started this is because I want more women in mapping right so the last thing I want to do is just be serving no offense guys I love you guys um, but I don't want to just be serving you cake you know what I mean like I want to actually be like teaching and learning this stuff with you I think we, have to get off the stage. we do oh are we done no we're not done yet never mind we have three, three minutes, minutes. Oh, okay ask us more things more things more things yes do you have a curriculum in the syllabus we do. Um, it's uh, and the mirroring display thing is making it pretty impossible for me to navigate to it. But um, it's not like you know, like an official syllabus. But yeah, it's definitely like a list of things that that we will do in order. Yeah. Part of the onboarding documentation too is like here are some places that might be good to start. Um, and they typically are like Intro to Web Mapping and OpenStreetMap 101. Mm -hmm. Those are the two that we like would suggest to people starting out. And there's course materials to go with the ideas? Yeah, there are uh, slide decks um, that are on GitHub. And all of the individual chapters have <coughs> slide decks that are on GitHub. Everything is all up in the open. It is. Uh, one of the challenges I think that we have, though, is that um, we have like a sort of centralized list on maptime.io of all the things that are available. But things are kind of, again, part of my like, I don't want to tell people too strongly what to do. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of like scattered in different people's, you know, like Git, you know, GitHub accounts and different repos and that kind of thing. So one of the things I know that we need to figure out relatively soon is how to better consolidate all of that documentation into one location so that people can find it more easily. Or just making, a, even if it is on the website, just making a point to like link to these things so that people can see where they all are. 
Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and if you want Map Time rainbow stickers, we have them, so many of them. And then also for any of the Map Time lover, organizer people, I'd love to get a photo with you before the day is out, so maybe we can meet out in the hallway afterwards. <laughs>